Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. You get an envelope with a glass syringe in it, the ampule with the injectable material, in this case xylocaine 2% with epinephrine 1 to 100,000, and a needle disposable. When you open the envelope, Take care in opening it that you do not attempt to dump the syringe out as although it's wrapped in a napkin, you may dump the glass syringe out on the tabletop. So be sure and get a hold of the napkin that's inside the envelope. You may have to actually tear the envelope open to do this. Look in and be sure that it's the barrel, open barrel end that you're going to get a hold of in the syringe and not the glass end that should be sterile. Always keep that in the sterile napkin, in an area of the napkin that you haven't handled, so that it can remain sterile. Also wrapped in the napkin should be some cotton and two by two gauze pads. Take one of the gauze pads and on the ampule, you'll notice that we have a bubble at the top of the ampule where some of the fluid is in the top. If you wrap this from the side with your finger, it will all slide down into the bottom part of the ampule. We'll set that aside and we'll use those in just a minute. Take the syringe out without touching the etched glass barrel, insert it inside where it can be remain sterile. Snap the needle off with a twisting part to get the clear plastic end off. Slip it on the end and turn it in and lock it to position. If you wish at this point, you can pull the red loose so that it's on there relatively easily and then lay your syringe on your napkin again. Go back to your ampule that you've put the solution into the top part and grasp it with your two by two and break the top off. If you don't grasp it with the two by two, you may end up with a cut finger. Now, although it seems as though it would all pour out, if we could have a close up on this, in order to load this, invert it upside down, the material will not flow out insert the needle in the bottom part just through the lip and withdraw the solution into the syringe. If you'll notice from a wide angle I'm holding that with just one hand and having to withdraw it with my fingertips. This way you can actually withdraw all of the material out of the syringe. If we can have a close-up we'll get it down to the last drop and not lose any. but we haven't actually touched the tip of the needle to the end of the glass, so we don't run the chance of dulling the beveled edge on there. Place the plastic tip back on at all times. Uh, if you'll notice on here, we also have bubbles inside the syringe. This is a problem that you'll have with glass syringes that you don't have with the carpule. If you wrap this from the side a few times, you'll knock those loose and then push it up until you've eliminated the bubbles out of there. If you leave the top on, you won't be squirting the material into the neighbor's unit. That should be placed again back into the, into the napkin and it's ready for use with the patient. This should be done preferably before the patient uh, is actually seated or at least behind the patient's back so that they're not observing the entire procedure.
I'm giving an anesthetic with a metal syringe. We won't cover this so thoroughly as you've all used metal syringes before. Uh, I do want to show a little bit as far as the approach to the patient is concerned. If you open this back up as we did with the metal syringe or with the glass syringe and get one of the cotton tips out. If you have some topical xylocaine or there's topical xylocaine as a gel uh, available out at the desk, you can place some of this on the side of a cotton roll and go to the patient and place this in the area of injection and just tuck that up into that area. Now this, if you do this before you start to load the syringe, by the time the syringe is loaded, the material will have a chance to take effect. If you use a topical anesthetic, wipe it on and do the injection immediately, it never has a chance to take effect. These screw on, the metal tip goes in first, you pull the spring-loaded part back to get the carpule in and let it seat. And this should be wrapped sharply and made sure that it engages the rubber plunger. Now if you break the red part of the end here loose so that it's setting on there Loosely, as we get ready to do the injection, we can tip that off and not have to leave go of any areas that we've dried. Take your two by two gauze. I like to lay this over my thumb. It lets me dry the tissue and then retract the tissue with the gauze between my finger and the lip. This will keep everything nice and dry. The other cotton tip should have a little more crescent placed on it and we can go back to the patient by now remove your cotton roll okay we'll just dry that off swab your site a little bit now, without leaving go of the patient, I can reach behind the patient. And merely by tipping the syringe, the tip will fall off. We can bring this in down below. Patient needn't see what all's going on. And then very slowly make your injection. If you watch the patient's eyes closely, you can kind of tell whether they're injecting a little too fast or not. She'll squint if we inject too fast. She hasn't yet. Okay. Place your tip back on your syringe. I generally like to go back to my injection site. Be sure we're not getting any hemorrhage, which we aren't. If you are, hold your cotton gauze over it. Otherwise, you're all set to let that get good and numb. When you give a mandibular injection, the cotton roll doesn't work too well at isolating in that area. But if you take a two by two gauze, reach back and dry the area, and then swab that with your cotton tip and topical anesthetic. Then taking your cotton tip, press that gauze back lightly against that area. Close together for me. Have the patient close on that and just hold that while you load your syringe and all like we did with the cotton roll. By the time you get done, the topical anesthetic will have had a chance to do some work. When you get ready and have your syringe ready, open for me please, remove that piece of gauze. If you have your second piece of gauze laid over your thumb and held with your fingers, open for me, you can go back and wipe the site and leave the gauze between your thumb and fingers and then swab with the mercrescent. Again, reaching in back of the patient for the syringe, drop the tip off and you can come in from underneath. 
You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.